so good evening uh, to all the uh, viewers uh, faculty members uh, and wish all of the organizers uh, have given this is a nice opportunity in this pleasant evening for this uh, fascinating subject the forensic science so i have the privilege of uh, expressing my views something sometimes in both in english and tamil where of the context requires before that uh, i uh, comments uh, uh, my expression of tadayam that is clue uh, in tamil in the sense uh, personally uh, i kept in mind like this tadu ayam in the phrase contains two words i split tadayam split into two words tadu ayam tadu means to prevent ayam is a doubt to clear the doubt it needs some clarification and the clarification is obtained by extracting the truth so tadayam is nothing but some material which is helpful to gain clarity to find some truth so in the same way the forensic science is a word coined by forensic and science the forensics is a latin word forum is called a public place the science is the truth as a nothing but a rational thinking of the things in the uh, uh, surrounding us and both come together will speak the truth in the public that has been evolved uh, uh, as we see now in the modern court world where the scientists is, or other uh, professionals uh, the the lawyer other advocates or any field of uh, uh, their profession they are uh, uh, depositing their testimonies in the court of law to establish what was uh, the uh, fact of uh, fact by uh, giving the explanation of the evidence what they collected uh, from the crime scene so the crime by itself is a act against law so it should be properly uh, established so for which uh, they need a, a tool of investigation again the investigation needs some tool for any profession uh, they need the respective tools for the plumber for the doctor for the engineers and for the carpenters likewise for uh, getting out the truth the investigation by uh, unraveling the truth from what has been uh, there at the crime scene they need that um, need some tools that is nothing but the forensic science the scientific application in the administration of the criminal justice system the tool by the means of the tool we have to get uh, some evidences this evidence is nothing but uh, uh, an object or uh, oral uh, information or some documents uh, or some material objects like this so when you say if you are a detective engaged in tracing a murder would you expect to find that the murderer had left his photograph behind at the less of the crime is the address attached no so uh, we, at these circumstances we need some material which indirectly implicate his presence at the soc so we see uh, the three p's in i mean the place the uh, people and the property available. the place is the soc scene of crime and the people is the who are the present at the scene for example uh, the offender and the other the victim they are the uh, general persons present at the scene and the surrounding people and the property uh, by means in the general language the weapon used whether it's a gun whether it's a knife whether in is any stick or they used to uh, assault the persons like that and other material evidence was also derived from the uh, uh, act at the commission at the crime scene so the forensic science means a mixed science so uh, it has uh, all the disciplines that is the biological science the physical science and the chemical science so again the evidence is collected from different places the soc by itself and the evidences from the victim and the evidences from the offender are evidences from the weapon again this kind of uh, uh, different environments are available for us to locate evidences for instance a car hit a person and uh, escaped uh, fearing the penalty is naturally called as a hit and run case where the point of impact uh, we can commonly come across paint of the car got embedded on the clothing of the victim a person who has been a hit and in turn at the point of damage on the car there will be a physical 
uh, evidence of dent, some damage, and also uh, getting uh, deep into the examination, we find some cloth materials sticking onto the, uh, some torn pieces of cloth of the victim who got embedded on the car. This is a co-location of the various evidences, one mutually transferred from car to the uh, victim and the uh, victim from the car. They are called the questioned uh, evidences whether the fabric on the car is derived from the uh, victim or the paint on the victim uh, cloth is derived from the car. Though they become questioned. When they apprehend some vehicle, they have to examine the paint, and they collect the paint in from the near and around the exact suspect disputed area. And they go for comparison, whether it is a paint or some other thing, whether this is the fabric uh, that has got torn from the uh, victim person, uh, like vice versa. So that needs a lot of application of physical science, examination of the paint, examination of fibers, like sometimes we come across the hair also. And a lot of things when the evidence materialist is coming into context, then, this has no definite bounded line. It's very wide spectrum of evidence, right from the dust, debris, uh, this uh, biological materials, pollen grains, uh, the blood, uh, semen, hair, uh, all, all things things we can uh, uh, enumerate many number of evidences. So the dust and debris are nothing but the reduced matter what is present uh, around us. They are not going to be reduced to elemental or atomic stage, but they are very pulverizable and easily uh, reduced to a small fine micro sizes. So that can we can perceive by our own naked eyes or something or perceived by using the various microscopes. So, and uh, uh, for any crime sense we examine, we need a central thing called corpus delicti, this body of the evidence. So it will say that something has happened at the scene, which may be uh, uh, due to some uh, called, called uh, um, yeah, dynamic process during the commission of crime. So we cannot uh, forget certain uh, pioneers uh, uh, that they are given their contributions. Like uh, uh, we would have come across the Arthur Conan Dial, he is uh, uh, the author of the Sherlock Holmes, uh, creating a vicious character uh, who is uh, using many of his scientific uh, disciplines in detecting the case, helping the investigation. And next comes the important evidence, Alphonse Bertillon, who is uh, described as the anthropometric, that is measurement of uh, Body, body, the dimension of the head, the length and the hands, the uh, body parts. So that is also uh, by probably factor, uh, the matching of two person equally is very remote, but they are not so uh, established to uh, best extent possible. But though the science was very useful for, uh, useful in the investigation. Then comes the, um, Hans Gross, who has first uh, used uh, criminal investigation, other uh, used his uh, methods in the criminal investigation. Then the Edmund Lockhart, what he says, the contact principle, our exchange principle. When two things come into contact, they exchange materials in between them, vice versa. So he was also uh, the pioneer in the uh, physical evidence examinations. And um, Henry's next comes the uh, respect of fingerprint. Uh, we come back from the Edwin Henry, who classified the fingerprints. The available class character is uh, the loop, arch, uh, the, uh, the combination of things, some accidental pattern. We come across in the fingerprint pattern. But they are the papillary digits or the friction digits. And uh, no individuals are the same fingerprint unless otherwise made by the same person, of, uh, same finger of the same person. So uh, the, though the, uh, the arch loop world and other patterns are classified and they are present in 60, 30, 5% like that in the population, they become the class character. But many persons may have loop, many persons may have the world, but still going deep into the intricacies of the fingerprint, we see various patterns like bifurcation, terminations, dot lines, shortages, hook pattern, crossover, and like that. There are nearly, more than 10 patterns, available patterns, which uh, are very to person to person with respect to the uh, count of the, the digits, 
traversing the core to the delta region, the external point, and which is the central point. They will make different uh, uh, regi characters. The regi characters, the number of regi characters, the, the uh, difference in the regi characters, and the uh, respective placement position is uh, accountable for uh, 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 characterizing a particular fingerprint and uh, ultimately to individualize. So it is a unique uh, evidence uh, that we come across in the fingerprint, which is widely used in one in billion and one in trillion will match like that. So the world population itself will be less than what is coming in the probability population. Likewise, in the DNA, this is a biological material where every person inherited from the parents out of 23 chromosomes the, uh, uh, the pair, 46 pairs are one is contributed by the father and one contributed by the mother this will have a definite traits in a particular location uh, in the chromosomes called genes and again there's the dna deoxyribonucleic acid this is made up of uh, different base pairs which are uh, unique the pattern is unique to different persons and they will variations in every person. The, uh, what is say the allelic pattern, the multiplication rule says that while the different factors are involved, when they are independent to each other, it comes to the uh, fact that one in million, one in trillion like that only uh, will be found the same in uh, person to person. But uh, finally, the uh, ultimate point is that no two individuals will be same in the population, uh, in one in ten and only in the coordinate like that. So it has also become a unique one. So this kind of uh, the fingerprint and the DNA, DNA is also by name called a DNA fingerprinting, uh, as unique as the, uh, the physical appearance of the rich character. We also call it a DNA fingerprinting. But not to confuse with the words DNA fingerprinting, we now call it as a DNA profiling. As the examination of the fingerprint is in situ, we can do whereas the DNA is a long process of uh, separation, identifications, uh, the fragmentation, and the blotting like that. It needs, I'm not going much deep into the theoretical method, but of its uh, uniqueness present as it trades in the every individual. So one can come across a question that whether uh, uh, to the D twin uh, identical twins. DNA will be, it will be same, but the fingerprint even in the identical uh, twin cell will vary. That is again a, um, a superiority uh, of the fingerprint for the DNA. But in the crime scenes, the application of both are very much useful in modern methods. Uh, uh, there are a lot of investigation techniques uh, and the results are made to exploit more of this uh, science. Then the natural, coming to the natural science, uh, the treasure is the crime scene is the treasure of evidence. If you go to the crime scene, the important factor is to procure, uh, to preserve the scene. We are going to the scene at the earliest possible. The rule says that whenever there is a lapse in time, for every lapse of hours, uh, certain percentage of evidence is lost by environment, by the <coughs> traverse of passions, by the over trading, by the natural air, the, the thermo, thermal condition, ecological condition like that. So the chronostability as well the thermostability. Chronostability is the uh, passage of time means. Thermal stability means the uh, atmospheric condition. So they will uh, naturally going to destroy the integrity of evidence. So the two, two things should be kept in mind when proceeding the, to the crime scene at the earliest, uh, procuring uh, what is cordoning the scene, what is a preservation of the scene, so other any person should not uh, be allowed to enter. And uh, one of the first visiting officer may be the police officer or the pilot officer to visit the crime scene. And subsequently, as for the recruitment, uh, the various experts like forensic uh, scientists, the fingerprint experts, even the sniffer dogs are also called the bomb squad experts in case of bomb, the fire and arson experts, uh, like that, the forensic, forensic pathologists in the exhumation cases, so like that. So preservation is important. Then going to be the observation. Observation means before uh, going for the observation, we should search the scene. There are different methods of uh, spirally searching the method, making segments of the crime scene, uh, making strip like uh, uh, segments of the crime scenes and going according 
uh, to the uh, function, whether it's the outer or indoor like that. And photographing the evidence method, before meddling with the things, there should be a permanent picture of the scene, which will be not be disturbed while collecting. So the photograph is again a evidence, a permanent evidence to show what happened to the, uh, what was observed on the scene and uh, what happened to the collected material, it, it was corroborated when present at the laboratory. Next, identification and documentation is again, what is the uh, evidential value at the particular crime scene? Uh, we can come across the biological science in the bodily offenses. We say that the blood uh, in the hypocrisy, we come across the similar signs. Uh, some poison cases, we find out the vomiting. Uh, some firearm cases, we find the bullets, uh, firearms itself. Uh, not only as a material evidence, uh, it's a very conventional method of observing, collecting this thing. But while uh, examining the uh, crime scene, we have to look for the uh, sequence of the events. It is a kind of inference. We can't say all the things are absolutely available, but something should be uh, uh, inferred by the, uh, the what's the reasonable, justifiably, it has been inferred what has happened. The, the investigation is divided into three phases. The police investigation by the oral interrogation, oral testimony. The expert, forensic expert will go observe and collect uh, identified materials. And in case of bodily offenses, the a uh, victim or a deceased or the dead person, the cops is sent to for postmortem. The medical, according to the medical jurisprudence, is treated as medical legal cases. And uh, the uh, forensic uh, surgeons or pathologists go for examining the external injuries, the internal injuries, whether it's death due to uh, some disease, whether death due to heart attack, whether death due to uh, internal injury, whether death due to any. Uh, injuries caused by external force, whether it is a self-inflicted or whether it is accidentally happened like that, uh, according to the changes in the body condition and the internal organs like that. Well, uh, coming across all these factors, the doctor will say the cause of death is like this. When coming to the other factor, manner of death, what kind of uh, mode this uh, caused the death means, this could be observed only at the crime scene. And again, we come to the three factors, whether due to asphyxia, which is respiratory failure, uh, loss of oxygen to the brain, and whether it is a, a, a blood uh, loss, internal hemorrhage, what we say, or the external hemorrhage due to injury, or whether due to uh, uh, neurological things, whether in uh, heart or lungs, like self-respiratory, there's cardiac arrest, blood vessels, ruptures, and the loss of blood like that. So that Three mode of death, what is called a tripod of life. Then examination of evidence is oral and uh, logical. Logical things is this would, would have happened like this because suppose uh, in uh, Tamil, when you come across this, we say that is a fire. When you see the smoke, we can say it's a logical information. When you uh, infer the smell, some person is uh, going there with the perfume. When even when you, in the, basically, when you think of some a piece of the sound of vehicle, the children go that father has come out less than. Even by pressing the calling bell, the very sound comes out of the calling bell, will give some clue to the person that he has uh, uh, pressed the calling bell like that. So everything, every small thing in day to day life is called evidence, but they are coming the class character. When it comes out of the voice, the voice is uh, produced by the oral box and by the vibration of the vocal cord. Again, though the uh, perceptually they are same, but when you go for the acoustical uh, uh, methods in uh, using the software and all, even small, uh, small, small micro variations are found in the uh, vibration. That is why it's called a voice box, uh, uh, the, like that. Uh, the voice box will reveal what are the uh, vocabularies or vowels or consonants, how they are pronounced, how they vary from person to person. So that was the, the technology of. Uh, uh, voice identification uh, like this. They need a control voice of the person who was suspected of a med speech or communications with the questioned voice. What is uh, uh, available from the telephonic communications and other mode of uh, communications? Again, there are documents, the writing materials. What is the style of writing? What is the method of embellishments? Is natural uh, variations like that are That can be very peculiar to a particular persons. 
So whether what is the ink used, what is the pen pressure, what is the pen lift, what is this natural style of decorations? Like so there are so many elements. Again, every letter is characterized by the certain shapes, and there are many shapes there also. Again, we are coming to the crime point of view, uh, the forgery, uh, the uh, obliterations, erasures. There are various technology to find out the erased materials. Obliteration means there is screening or scribbling on the already written material. So they are also viewed using the various infrared spectroscopy. The erased materials can be used by the fluorescence technique with UV. And there's the UV vis method for uh, uh, for getting out of what the deciphering is uh, important thing since under questions. So they collect the admitted writings in the person what they have uh, already wrote without the intention. The question writings, what is coming on dispute, and the exempters, what they prepare, uh, the corresponding materials from uh, the suspects or any uh, accused person, so that they will compare the documents. So any writings can be described as documents. So this document examination go on uh, through all these things uh, uh, to uh, decipher things. Then uh, comes the circumstances. Circumstances is uh, evident, which is not by the uh, uh, it according to circumstances available, not by the personal objective. So whenever you visit the crime scene, you should not be subjective. You should be impartial, only finding out the evidence which will give you the uh, fact and the truth. So this kind of uh, evidence, what is available when strongly, they uh, correlate the eyewitnesses and all. This will have a, a sense of the case for other things also. Because the oral evidence may say lie, they will be uh, bribed, they will be threatened uh, for gain. So uh, the oral evidence may also may not present at the time of uh, the trial when they uh, when come to the court of law. So not only they, they may lie also, but whereas the physical ob objects or materials, uh, they will not lie. That's why they call the silent witnesses or unlying witnesses. Then comes the transient evidence. They persist only for the little time. So, for example, when you see the rainbow during the rain season, it uh, appears only for a uh, little period of time, but with the, due to the droplets are reflected. Once the droplets ceases to be present, the rainbow will go off. Again, the smoke, the color of the flame, the water at the particular crime scene, that will vanish uh, as the time passes. They are called the transient evidence, but they have the uh, primary value when the first officer visited or first witness visited the scene, so that the documents start from uh, the witness by the question, how they uh, explain it, but that it really coincides with the uh, things that happened at the crime scene. Then comes the patent evidence. Patent evidence is, it creates a wide range of evidence. Patents will take the blood stain. The blood stain appears in different patterns at the crime scene, a drop, a droplet, uh, different at which height it has fallen uh, when the height increases the drop will break and uh, spurt into different uh, uh, oval shape or a uh, star shape like that keeping head and in uh, uh, tail pattern again when the blow is uh, uh, made on the injured uh, with the blunt weapon or the bleeding injury it will give you a, a spurt on the impact it will uh, go and hit on any surrounding persons or a person who are uh, uh, again, the offender himself, there is a chance of this blood being spattered onto the offender itself or surrounding area, like a spurt. The very pattern of the spurt would indicate whether it is the expelled out of the artery, the flowing blood, arterial blood, or any, any short, short weapon is used with a heavy blow. The angle of the impact, the shape, tailing, head, and all these things will say whether it is vertical. But this is the angular impact that is dropped like that, that is slowed down or went up. These are very characteristic features are uh, evaluated from the blood pattern. And it's still more uh, beneficial is the uh, pattern used when the firearm uh, injuries, when the bullet passes with the high velocity into the organ, especially bloody organ, the capsules burst, uh, blood capsules burst. And the pattern will be like a misty pattern rather technically cut. This clearly indicates that. Uh, the heavy velocity impact was made. So according to the injuries, whether the bullet hole is there, whether the bullets are present or any empty case, cartridge cases, the component of the ammunition, what we say, cartridge case bullet used in the firearm uh, is uh, represented that we collect. 
and sent to the laboratory how, how from how, how how long distance the fire has been made uh, how long the bullet traversed whether it was uh, uh, hit on a other object before hitting the subject what is called a recalcitrant bullet it, it uh, contributes to certain factors when uh, in case of accidental whether the firearm is prone to accidental or due to any fault in this uh, designing in the mechanics and it is warrant uh, like that whether the intentionally fired the range of fire what is it whether it is a close contact or near closer or few feet away or uh, 10 feet away like that. the different patterns will be uh, re <coughs> reflected on the as a powder pattern on the clothing or on the, around the injury from which the forensic ballistic expert will come to a conclusion by using the test fires uh, so that uh, the distance range of fire could be calculated by which whether it is accidental but that person fired it or uh, by what is called uh, by the uh, efficiency of the bullet or efficiency of the uh, cartridge powder is lost like that. There are so many elements involved uh, in interpreting the award and these things. I'm not going much deep into this case. But I am, I, then comes the, uh, the injuries. Some in cases there will be injuries, but there won't be, and the body would have been destroyed, it became liquefied. So injuries could not be clearly made. At this juncture, the unchanging pattern on the dress, the wearing garments, the corresponding, uh, uh, what is called, uh, sharp uh, weapons, penetration, holes, and the injuries caused by the uh, swing of the weapons and uh, by which the blood uh, flowed out like that. Likewise, in the bullet uh, uh, firearm cases, we can go for the bullet injuries in corresponding to the uh, bullet holes on the uh, clothing center. Again, the, the, the crime scene examination is very important for all these interpretations. So the crime laboratory is working on uh, three, as I earlier said, the chemical uh, what is called chemical science, what they analyze the chemicals, the explosive residues, the firearm residues, what is called firearm dis discharge residues, or gunshot residues, and the uh, other chemicals. In some resilience cases, the smeared powder, like that, uh, the secret powder, which is uh, uh, washed and brought to the laboratory so that this person handled the currency during course of the bribing act. Like that. that biologic material, as you know, uh, the blood stains, seminal stains, sweat, uh, saliva, or uh, oral, oral secretions, and all. They are called the body fluid. And there's uh, some digital evidence using the CCTV footage, mobile phones, the cyber prints, which come, comes under the uh, computer forensic. Now, this FE, DNA, voice, now other science, branch of science, odontology, very important. Now, the, the study of the uh, dentist, uh, there's a new technology. Uh, what is the uh, dental pattern, whether it is supernumerary, whether it is a spacious uh, diastema, what you say in, in that technology, whether it's any missing teeth, whether it's an artifact, uh, whether it's a fault, uh, what is pulse, it, what you say in terms of pulse, it, the artifacts. Uh, so I just uh, explain some of the things in the uh, actual cases that I encountered. For example, you get a hair and fiber in. I attended, we attended a scene where a culprit attempted to commit theft. The inmates were absent going away for some purpose. The Munarian dog was present in the scene. The culprit has to struggle with the dog for quite some time and having failed, he went away from the scene. Somehow he managed to injure the dog, it simultaneously died. The family was so sad about the incident, not about the incident, but the injury caused to the dog. They call the expert, there is no fingerprint at all. But anyway, according to the uh, sensitivity of the family, they called the scene. And we went to the scene and they examined the dog. So we always uh, expect that the fur of the dog may have the chances of getting transferred onto the struggling uh, uh, intruder, I mean the offender. So immediately we want the police to secure the suspect person. At one point of a person was apprehended. Immediately on examination the scene, the fur of the dog was in large amount present on the uh, culprit, they immediately confessed the crime. Like what in these uh, uh, hair, like hair, the other fibers uh, are also by cross transfer, one person to person, or during the commission of the scene, 
there will be a transfer of fiber. They will also examine whether it's a natural fiber, that is animal fiber. In a particular case, there, there is a serial murder in which the fibers were found on the deceased person, victim. The industry has to come across these things uh, uh, in uh, so many cases. So they come to conclusion that it was uh, committed by a same person. And the person was suspected to wear a coat which is having a lapel of made up of uh, this fiber. And he actually denied the fact that uh, he is not involved. But anyway, the examination of the fabric fur collected from this suspected person is not matching the one collected from the crime scene. So one shows the artificial fibers, one shows the wool, it's a natural fiber. So this uh, clearly made the person suspected to be innocent. It was, uh, it is the exculpatory evidence, the innocence is proved. So the elimination of the subject from the crime scenes is so important uh, that it will give us better role to uh, decide upon the case. So what is the general thing is supposed to be? Water, when the impossible is uh, eliminated, and what remains, the whatever the matter, the improbable is the truth. It's a very good thing. So we, when you keep the things in mind, we clearly uh, competently under this system. Then coming to fingerprint and the DNA together in a scene, there's a murder case in which a glass sampler was seized. With some fingerprint was uh, developed, and a blood stained plaster was available at the crime scene, which is not uh, uh, pertaining to injury or something, and that. Uh, this is a dead person's body. So it could be a foreign material with respect to the place. They both were collected and deposited in the court. Later, when the suspect was apprehended, they collected blood stain from the person and another, both the fingerprint. One tallied with the DNA of the blood. It is, uh, uh, is nothing but the caused by the, transmitted by the injuries, unhealed injuries, what he had in his uh, toe of the foot. And another one is the fingerprint of the second person. So two persons involved with the, the unique uh, features of one DNA and the fingerprint of the other person. In the cases become very useful for the conviction of the person. Another one is the DNA as well as bite mark. In the sexual violence cases, it's a perversion where the uh, uh, offender uh, bite the organs in many places on the deceased uh, on a lady. So we. Uh, initially, the uh, suspect was not known who was the culprit was there. So we kind of got a swab from the place where the, uh, he bit the uh, organ, and uh, we collected the saliva. And in turn, again, after removing this uh, evidence, we uh, resorted to go for the uh, dentist to take the bite marks with the silicon cast. It's a special material to obtain the cast of the silicon material, like uh, we get the footprint uh, using the plaster Paris like that. It was uh, deposited in the court and the latter in the accused was uh, apprehended both the saliva samples and the uh, bite mark cast, bite, it's dental cast was taken by the odontologist, both exactly matched. The, both the evidence from the same parents in different uh, way from the DNA and the bite marks was useful in a case to adduce his crime and uh, it has been established. It is also given conviction in the case. In some cases, uh, uh, the fingerprint, uh, the availability, the person is wrongly booked on some suspicion. In a particular case, uh, a lady uh, given some uh, poisoned milk to, uh, uh, to the child of the other uh, lady. The owner of the child made complaints against the other one that is purposely given poisonous milk to the kid, so giving to eliminate her from the family. But in seeing the crime scene, we can't exactly find out what is the clue, except for the handling of the pesticides. In the pesticides, we search for the pesticides container, which was not a discarded one from other places. It is purposely hidden at the particular place. And the part of the pesticide, the cap is available in the suspect's Almira, which he connected, uh, she is the actual offender, but not the one who has been allegedly or wrongly booked otherwise. So this is clearly, uh, given light on the real offenders. So uh, this kind of uh, evidence could not be as such interrogation by interrogation. We should look at such and connect the material, the gap with versus the bottles, which also bore fingerprint of the uh, person who is uh, the, the real offender. Then comes to the foot, uh, footprint. And the footprints uh, as uh, outfit may be seen, same or size and all, 
but there will be a class character. But what is important in this certain peculiarities in the world, the dimensions and the various metrics is followed. Uh, that is uh, it's very, it's a long subject for this uh, discussion that the session. However, we come up with the characters, features, which, uh, there's some uh, scar, some pits, uh, uh, some kind of source will be seen on the soul. That's a plantar region, what you say. When such impressions are seen on the blood stained footprint and blog, it will be enormous value that we can fix the particular person's footprint with this. This is again the peculiarities which have become individualistic and which cannot be available in other person's footprint. Likewise, the shoe print or footwear print, what we commonly say, not a shoe or it's a footwear print. The, again, when it comes as a, viewed as a class character, the size, they make the company all one and the same. But uh, during the usage of time, the utility for long it has been used. There will be some repairs, some damages, uh, the embedding stones or some stitch marks, uh, some uh, uh, cracks. Every species will be seen. So uh, the impressions, uh, the pressure point like that, uh, the walking style, the weight of the person who use the shoe like that. Every kind of small, small factors and, and the intricate features like the damages are also viewed in the uh, foot, footwear. That when it is depicted in the impressions at the crime scene by means of the transfer of uh, fluid, by means of transfer of these the impressions on the soil, uh, they are very much useful. They proved well in the court of law. But uh, keeping in mind that the individuality is uh, extracted out of the evidence. Then, uh, mm -hmm. Some kind of injuries are self-inflicted. So we can easily understand uh, uh, whether it is under intoxication or uh, whether it made its own. Uh, in a particular case, a person during the act of embellishment, that is, uh, uh, he wanted to steal the amount of what he was uh, interested to. He made own uh, uh, injuries using a eraser blade on his forehand, both going parallel and both superficial. But according to this company, somebody attacked him with the blood and uh, get rid of the uh, amount from him. But the very pattern of the injuries, uh, non-fatal things uh, and the parallel injuries, you can certainly indicate that it's not caused by the external offender. But uh, there is no uh, what is, uh, uh, defending injuries also with him. Another case, uh, like kind of explosion, unlike uh, some cases are misconstrued as a murder. In the particular case, there was a lot of injuries on the victim with a lot of blood shed. Initially, it was booked as a murder case. But when you examine, there is no consistent evidence for anybody to commit murder. But the examination of the injuries and the footwear and the wearings indicated that the current from the lightning could have penetrated his body. And uh, even up to the fire uh, sold to the footwear. And the laboratory has uh, given the nice. Uh, uh, result uh, based on the examination all that it could uh, that will uh, cause of the lightning. So the three or two case one changed it to lightning. And the current, uh, the passage of current in lightning will also will give a mistaken idea to the common uh, eyes of the man. So here the particular uh, forensic scientist application in the discipline uh, to the current technology, the what what about the current, what is the voltage, what will cause, the, what is the uh, 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 different kinds of uh, uh, the behavior of the current while passing through the body. It can be. In the uh, case, uh, it's also case mistaken accused. Uh, it's a case of uh, death, uh, murder of a old man. Uh, three persons was involved. There was a previous history that there was a quarrel and the three persons vowed to kill the man the previous night. The, actually, the three persons are arrested, but uh, uh, they say they, they denied the fact. But when he came, visit the crime scene, he got the button attached to a small piece of cloth. So he immediately wanted to search the uh, house premises of the three persons, but nothing available. But in another house, a youngster, we uh, got hold of a, a shirt which is uh, missing this button and a piece of uh, clothing. It exactly physically matched with the uh, missing uh, area on the shirt. So the totally uh, the three persons was proved innocent and they confessed that there was a, a love affair issue between the two communities. So the old man did not accept the marriage. So the, both the lovers decided to do away with it. 
uh, uh, thing the other way. When there is a quarrel between these things, uh, uh, they want to eliminate the person. They're exploiting the situation of the quarrel, uh, bring the three others. They killed the old man uh, and uh, the blame was shifted to the three others. But the physical evidence of the button with the cloth is exactly fitting into the damage that indicated that the, the answer was the real offender. Again, the entire effort was the, made using these three accused persons, but totally they had seen the thing. Unless other visit the scene and getting this very small but very important significant clue. So, so here comes a individual character. This is a physical match, what you say. When uh, it and Genji, when a flake of paint is uh, dropped, uh, the piece of paint will exactly fit into the vacant area which is available on the this thing. In the particular case of theft, uh, I identified that the draw in which the values were stored was broken using some uh, material through the keyhole. The keyhole was light, not properly uh, uh, visible. But anyway, on examining the uh, keyhole, some material is obstructing the hole. When you look into the uh, dismantled and look, some uh, needle, gunny needle pieces available. While searching the neighbors, according to the circumstances, uh, the external person's involvement eliminated, but the strength of suspicion is around the neighbors. So we collected all the uh, gunny needles in an appropriate way. In one house, they got the gunny needle broken. The broken piece exactly matched with the crime scene uh, piece of the needle. This is called a physical match, physical fitness. Immediately, the accused confessed to the crime. That means he himself satisfied uh, with the evidence and what he come across it as a bond from his end. So the physically, whatever the things we denied, when he come across his own evidence matching at the crime scene and the connecting his association with the crime scene, he definitely out of psychological emotion, he come out of the truth. And in another case, the uh, 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 boy missing case. Nowadays, there are many cases with girl missing, boy missing, and other disorder missing. Paris is the, the special case. Uh, normally, they, what the investigation will do is they will collect various boy missing cases. In and under, yeah, they send the matters to the neighboring district also. But the particular case is not uh, detectable uh, because some lack of, lack of uh, procedures is there. And a lot of the efforts are taken, but this is not coming out. While coming across the discussion with the uh, forensic expert, uh, uh, the, the expert also again reinvestigated the case using all the details. But the near clo close proximity of the incident, uh, there was one body available to have been found uh, floating in a lake, uh, but it has been uh, 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 mistaken for the adult about 45 years. But the missing boy is aged about 17 years. He's a juvenile. But all the evidence has been preserved, but they're not at probably in situ at the crime scene. A lot of efforts were taken for collecting a, a skull bones and all. But one skull was uh, evident with the uh, dentures, number of dentures, which matched the particular age. The forensic water is uh, consulted. He said that this is a young boy. So mere external appearance, the bloating body is mistaken for the adult person. The entire loss of time and all the efforts is failing because of this uh, very preliminary indication. Had there been counts of the uh, dentures as made earlier, the age could have been attained, the case would have been finished that time itself. But it takes months together to come across. The forensic scientists has made use of the forensic odontologists who in turn say they, again it has to be proved. Both the skull and these uh, dentures were sent. The DNA material from the skull were extracted. And in addition to that, in anthropology division where the bones are examined, they superimposed the body with the photograph of the body exactly matched. Again, the, uh, not satisfied with these things, uh, the complainant made for the further examination in the other uh, state also. Again, the uh, report was exactly the same when it was conducted in the other state. So, so, so appropriately, it was appreciated. The scientific never fails, uh, but the application is proper and correct with the proper interpretation. Also. So in a particular case, the primary SOC, we come across the primary SOC or secondary SOC. The actual place of occurrence will be uh, one, the body ship to do. They called a dismembered body or discarded in different places, what the 
different geological areas. The different parts will be seen scattered in different places, coming under the jurisdiction of different police stations or even district or neighboring stations. When all coordinate together, the every pieces should be corroborated to each other using some identical mouth, some DNA technique. That has to be conducted for each and every tissue material so that it's corroborated that one originated from the same. Likewise, in the most disaster case, so there may be many skeletal remains or many shattered pieces of bodies uh, like that. We have to account for whether this many members have come or any external agencies in here. Like in uh, explosive factory cases, there was a mishapa and in which the 25 persons were torn to pieces. All the uh, identifications were uh, made it satisfactorily done except one piece, uh, which gives the in, uh, impression that some external uh, men who had uh, committed the sabotage could have been there. But again, uh, it was proved by the DNA analysis that no more other than the 25 persons are available that everything is accountable with the 25 persons. In other exposed incident cases, in fact, two persons were the laborers. As is uh, due to accidentally or by the uh, negligence, they exploded. Both were torn to pieces. The crime scene officer visited, and uh, the, uh, earlier the exposed inspector visited and said the one the piece is available, but then the one person, the other would have become charred and ash, become ash, it is ash. The, the fact that the uh, 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 fire or the heat generated in the microseconds will not uh, reduce anything to ash, but definitely there will be pieces. But because we ruled out the possibility of the second person, we strongly said that the one person is present at the scene and the other person not at all. So after the investigation, it was clear, but earlier the conversations given to the, both the families uh, through the uh, government, but uh, on uh, Extending all these senses, the index investigation was again continued. The other person was outstanding. Uh, the exploiting the, this situation was, uh, I want to get the compensation also. But it was proved well. The science began to say, uh, the, the explanatory things began to say. Likewise, the arson and fire. Fire is a general incident caused by many ways. Very electrical fire or fire the accidentally like that. Whereas the arson is the fire incident is intentionally uh, made by the arsonist or sell arson for the intention, intention of fire for a uh, for grudge for uh, make destroying the properties or destroying the crime, uh, some evidences. Uh, every though the fire is the district material by itself, uh, the intruder also will make some arrangements uh, to screen the evidence, make burning the body, dead body. It is again coming to the medical legal system whether this uh, that is caused by fire, anti mortem or post mortem, whether any organization material, uh, suit particles found inside the body, telling that the person was alive during the fire, or any carbon monoxide poison due to the incomplete combustion, the, the exertion of carbon monoxide will also uh, choke the person. It's a poisonous gas. Uh, whether the real, uh, death caused by really fire, or but the uh, uh, carbon monoxide presence. Uh, Mean that the, the earlier death could have occurred like that. In some accident cases, the generator gas, the gas exploded from the automobile engine, they will also generate certain gas carbon monoxide, which is caused death. Uh, it may be accidental also, it may, may be intentionally made uh, uh, this thing so that uh, this uh, incident can be fabricated like this. So almost every care should be taken to analyze the things at the crime scene. So that is what he says, the crime scene is the test of evidence, not only mere picking up evidence, whether the evidence is uh, pertaining to the one with the context, uh, the quantity, what I call the micro traces. The quantity is important. They are use of microscopes, so very, uh, very well sophisticated instruments in comparison microscopes. We compare the bullet uh, striations marks on the body. Uh, hairs the fibers uh, like that. They are all the uh, sophisticated instruments, what uh, SPLC, uh, small organic compounds. They are uh, analyzing the micro traces for drug analysis, in the toxicology analysis, whether the poison is there or not in the visceral part of the body. In uh, blood alcohol concentration, what is encountering in the motor accident cases, the breathalyzer, you can collect the blood from the urine from the medical officers. In uh, in situ cases, uh, they suspect any drunkenness case. They want the uh, abundance to the blow so that the micro concentration alcohol will change in color 
of the chemical synthesis in the other way calibrated by the uh, calorimetric method so the quantum of means is back calculated how time has elapsed what could have been the quantity of alcohol you would have so again there could be a, a reconstruction the back calculation that is very important mere uh, presence of a person the circumstances the quantity that is also uh, uh, matters so while giving the evidence the every testimony should be given with the established fact not mere uh, mere the mere understanding of science it should be proved beyond doubt there is a limitation of in every science what is there? every evidence is available but what is the perceived is important some are micro tests some are over trumped some are missed with the other factors so everything should be borne in mind and giving testimony should have updated knowledge and on the particular subject particular disciplines it's the multiple discipline science which is a fascinating one that every field of officers forensic biologists forensic chemistry forensic serologist forensic odontologists forensic pathologists forensic engineers in the building collapse like that building dam everything is uh, governed by the forensic engineering the crime anything happened uh, uh, is uh, this thing so uh, coming to uh, i think that the sufficient sufficient uh, it's a wide subject it needs a lot of uh, patience for the viewers also and uh, with the subtle and concise uh, point of narration i think uh, i conclude uh, uh, my session and in uh, if uh, permitted in next session we go elaborate in various disciplines so thank to the forensic evaluation of science and the contributors who have paid much much for the technological uh, development and all so thank you sir